According to a retired U.S. general, Vladimir Putin has been left humiliated after having to travel to the far end of Russia to meet with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un and pleading for ammunition. Putin's need to beg Kim for outdated ammunition and rockets to aid in his grueling battle in Ukraine is a clear sign of his isolation and desperation, according to Ben Hodges, a former commander of U.S. forces in Europe. According to General Hodges, although the Russian warmonger would hope that having access to such ammunition would aid in his assault, doing so will only extend his war efforts for a few more months and result in thousands more Russian soldiers dying for no reason other than Putin's personal ambitions. Desperate person. In a rare summit that the U.S. says might see North Korea provide Moscow with much-needed artillery shells and anti-tank missiles to employ in Ukraine, Putin greeted Kim at Russia's contemporary space rocket launch site today with an exuberant handshake that lasted 40 seconds. This is embarrassing for Putin and his government. Because of sanctions and years of corruption, the Russian defense sector is in ruins, General Hodges told Mail Online. Going to the farthest reaches of Russier to meet with Kim Jong-un and beg for weapons is a blatant admission of Russia's isolation and desperation, according to some. It is claimed that North Korea has tens of millions of outdated rockets and artillery rounds that are compatible with Russia's Soviet-era designs, as well as a history of manufacturing such munitions. Even if North Korea does provide Russia with its stores of obsolete ammo and rockets for Soviet-era weaponry, according to General Hodges, it won't result in a Russian win. According to General Hodges, this might provide Russia the means to continue its efforts for a few more months, depending on what North Korea actually agrees to offer. This indicates that thousands more Russian soldiers will perish for no other reason than Putin's own goals. The desperate plight of their Russian adversaries and the huge amount of growing help they are receiving from 50 other countries will be brought into stark contrast for Ukrainian soldiers as a result. He claimed that the significance of today's meeting between Putin and Kim lay solely in what it revealed about the condition of the Russian defense industry and its desperation. General Hodges continued, It also shows how isolated Russia is in the world. Any arms deal between North Korea and Russia would be an admission of weakness rather than strength for Vladimir Putin, Dr. Alan Mendoza, executive director of the think tank Henry Jackson Society, told Mail Online, It would show that Russia's much-vaunted but serially underperforming military is now running out of munitions and weapons and is dependent on a tin-pot dictatorship. Even if there is an armament supply, the outcome of the conflict will hardly be changed. North Korean equipment quality is unproven, and it will continue to rely on Russian tactics, which, so far, have shown to be anything but effective. To be effective. A retired U.S. Army brigadier general named Kevin Ryan stated that he thought Kim's visit was more about politics than military support. According to him, the visit by Kim Jong-un and the talks with Putin were more about politics than it was about providing military help, he told Mail Online. Putin may have arranged for munitions and equipment from North Korea through one of the various channels that exist between the two nations. Russia and North Korea have worked together on military equipment throughout the years without any fanfare or visibility. It seems that both of the leaders in this situation want a clear indication that they have allies and are not alone in the globe. Both Russia and Ukraine have used an enormous amount of shells and have turned to allies and partners to replenish their ammo supplies. A Western diplomat claimed on Friday that Russia shot 10-11 million bullets into Ukraine last year. The U.S. has given Ukraine modern munitions, including the Excalibur shell, which use GPS guidance and steering fins to hit targets as tiny as 3 meters, 10 feet, away from a distance of up to 40 kilometers, 25 miles. Although North Korea's offering is probably not as high-tech, 
Russia would benefit in the short term if it can access those stocks. According to Simon Wieseman of the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, almost none of the ammunition is in any way modern. It would support the typical Russian barrage-type usage of artillery, but not offer Russia with any precise ammunition. According to Wesemann, North Korea would need to have millions of rounds on hand only to refill any ammo used in drills or demonstrations. This would require North Korea to have major production capabilities. Putin's appeal for munitions from destitute North Korea, according to General Hodges, is a new low. In fact, this request represents a role reversal from the Korean War of 1950 to 1953, when Moscow provided weapons to back Pyongyang's invasion of South Korea, and from the decades of Soviet support for the North that followed. In a recent paper, Patrick Hinton, a British Army fellow at the Royal United Services Institute, stated that while artillery can assist shatter the will and cohesion of the enemy, it is more involved than just firing shells at the opponent. Hinton claimed that if faults succeed recognized limitations, the issue of quality in North Korean artillery shells might have an effect. Improperly constructed ammunition will behave inconsistently, according to him. Its flight characteristics may be impacted, reducing accuracy. Its fuses may function prematurely due to low quality, and its shelf life may be shortened if the substance is made improperly. These must all be built to a high standard. Otherwise, they might not land where they should which could have disastrous results. Since the North Korean army launched approximately 170 shells at the South Korean island of Yeonpyeong in 2010, killing four civilians, the performance of its artillery and crews has been questioned. More than half of those bullets, according to a report by the Washington-based 38 North Project, fell in the area around the island, and just 20% of those that hit the island actually exploded. According to the analysis, a significant failure rate revealed that some artillery ammunition produced in North Korea either had poor quality control during manufacture or poor storage conditions and standards. The lack of accuracy and the occasional failure of a shell or rocket wouldn't really matter to the Russians because they had so much ammo according to Wiesman. There have been hints that such quality difficulties play a role with Korean ammo, he continued, so it would matter if it were of such poor quality that it was just unsafe to use by Russian soldiers. Kim could demand advanced weapons technologies, such as those related to intercontinental ballistic missiles, nuclear-capable ballistic missile submarines, and military reconnaissance satellites, in exchange for much-needed energy and food assistance. In fact, it appears that Kim is looking to Russia for technical assistance for his efforts to develop military reconnaissance satellites, which he has described as essential in enhancing the threat of his nuclear-capable missiles. This is suggested by the choice to meet at Vostoshny Cosmodrome, Russia's most significant domestic satellite launch facility. North Korea has repeatedly failed to launch its first military spy satellite into orbit in recent months. During a significant political summit in 2021, Kim officially pledged to develop a number of significant weapon systems, including spy satellites. Russia possesses the technology necessary to produce these spy satellites. However, a deal on weaponry would go against the international restrictions that Russia has previously backed. Meanwhile, an adoring Kim today praised the virtue and honor displayed by Vladimir Putin's sacred struggle in Ukraine's front lines by the heroic Russian army. Kim gushed about Putin's war, which has killed thousands of Ukrainians and destroyed entire neighborhoods, saying he was certain Moscow will defeat Ukraine with a great victory. At a luncheon Putin gave, Kim raised a glass to toast the success of Great Russia, saying, I am deeply convinced that the heroic Russian army and people will certainly win a great victory in the sacred struggle to punish the gathering of evil. In what he saw as the West's imperialism in the conflict in Ukraine, 
Kim stressed that Russia would triumph against evil. A toast to the future strengthening of cooperation and friendship between our countries, Putin said as he stood up and raised his glass. For the health of the chairman and all those present, for the welfare and prosperity of our nations. Kim and Putin had four hours of talks, during which it is believed they discussed Russia's need for anti-tank missiles and artillery rounds. North Korea demands that Russia divulga its technological secrets on satellites and submarines in Exchangi. Kim was given a tour of the Faisalitias as the leaders gathered at the Vostokhny spaceport in the far eastern Amur region of Russia. The tyrant is anticipated to tour further Russian military facilities after arriving from North Korea in his specially designed armored train. Kim will examine an aircraft factory in Komsomolsk on Amur and ships from the Russian Pacific Fleet in a port in Vladivostok, according to Putin. According to Kremlin reporters, Putin and Kim were presented with a buffet that included a duck and fig salad, crab dumplings, sturgeon, and beef with a choice of Russian wines. Earlier today, as soon as Kim emerged from his black vehicle, Putin warmly shook hands with him and said he was very glad to see him. At the Vostokny Cosmodrome, a cutting-edge space rocket launch facility tucked away in eastern Russia's woodlands, Putin proudly displayed rockets to Kim. Kim, one of the few world leaders to stand by the autocrat since his full-scale invasion of Ukraine, began 19 months ago, assured Putin that their two nations would fight imperialism together in a sacred war with the West. The two tyrants put on an energetic show today, which will further fuel worries that Kim would provide Putin the artillery shells and anti-tank missiles he desperately needs for his conflict in Ukraine. During their visit to the Vostokny Cosmodrome, the leaders, who are both known to be paranoid about assassination attempts, were surrounded by a lot of bodyguards. The Soyuz-2 space rocket launch facility was the first stop on the two men's visit, during which the North Korean Kim grilled a Russian space official with inquiries regarding the rockets. Kim had received congratulations from Putin on a number of North Korean milestones, including the country's 75th anniversary of its founding in 1948. The encounter demonstrates how the interests of the two leaders are converging in the face of their separate, escalating conflicts with the U.S. and the West.